Hi, we're at the Werders Art Gallery in Culver City, and we're here to interview our very own Monica Quiet. And Monica is a fiber artist. She works in old sweaters, and she transforms them into these fabulous, fabulous uh, creations. And we'll take a look at that in a little while. But in the meantime, we're going to interview her right now. I'm going to ask her a few questions. Here she is. This is Monica Quiet. Hi, Renee. Thank you so much. I am so thrilled and honored to be here and to be a part of The Word is Art. Well, we're thrilled as well. So I'm just going to ask you a few questions about okay. yourself and about your work and so forth. Um, you come from a government background. And when did you start your artistic endeavors? Hmm. According to my family, it, it started very early. I was born with the umbilical cord kind of wrapped around my arm. And so they thought I was knitting in the womb. Wow. So that's when it started and really ever since I could hold needles I've been working with fiber and, and never really stopped even all through my municipal career. Um, <clears throat> it, fiber arts provided me with kind of a refuge and a safe haven from all the stresses of the day. I could go there and I could explore and create and nobody told me how to do it and when it had to be done and I, it could just be myself. Um, it, was, it was really a, a wonderful uh, thing. Um, I also I was able to share with my colleagues. We had little knitting circles at lunchtime and I uh, was very fortunate to have a boss that understood that um, I had to take Thursday off because I had to spin that alpaca fleece I just purchased. <laughs> I love it so. I love it. Yeah, yeah. it's lucky that way. That was very generous. Of yes, her. it was. Because she look shared. at these fabulous I creations. Thank um, you. And just we're very blessed to have you. Yeah. I'm so honored. Um, so, um, so you were inspired by the fiber art from when you were very young. Mm -hmm. Is was there a particular person that inspired you? Um, Yes, not so much as fiber arts go, but just um, outlook and philosophy. And that was my grandpa, and I took his name. His name was Kviet. Um, and what was his name? Kviet. It's quiet is, oh. is fine. It's the Americanized way. It's just kind of a, a, a kind of a funny thing because I'm not quiet. So to call myself <laughs> quiet, I just thought was a great oxymoron. And plus, it is his name, and I want to honor my mom from his memory. But when I was little, we used to go walking, and, and he would pick up the oddest things. This was in post-war Germany. There was not much around. He'd pick up a rusty bent nail, and he'd look at it, and he'd go, look, if we just sand it down, and I can hammer that guy straight, and it'll be like new. Or he would, we would come home with pockets full of chestnuts, and we would um, put sharpened matchsticks and put them together to make these fabulous animals. Oh, and goodness. Or he'd pick up a... a, 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 a a paper clip and he'd say, do you remember, do you remember that piece of ribbon we found yesterday? If I bend it to sew and we put that ribbon here, you could have a hair clip. Oh and goodness. so what he taught me, Renee, was not to see the object, but to see what it could become with your imagination and your work. How lucky so, to have somebody yes. like that in your life. Yes, that was very it's, blessed. It inspires the yes. imagination. Yes. How wonderful. Yes. I love it. Um, so, um, do you pursue other in art interests um, other than the fiber? Do you I write poetry sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is, did that start when you were very young? Um, I started in, like, you know, we call it in German, we call it puberty poetry, where you write all your angst and all your problems. And so I was published in the school newspaper oh. at a very early age. Um, That's encouraging. But yeah, it was. But then it just kind of it was just kind of a, a quiet passion somewhere in the background. Yeah. yeah. Quite appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Is there a direction that you haven't ventured into for um, your future that you see yourself going? Um, uh, recently I've worked with sculpture. I made as a, a signature piece for this upcoming exhibit is the sorcerer. And I um, sculpted him with tufts of wool and a special needle that. Um, that would that be needle felting? Needle felting, I that's see, the, the correct name for the procedure. Um, and um, I would like to explore sculpting further with the use of clay or, or wood and let them speak for me. Well, that's very, I, I love that idea because I like 
love to do that with you. I mean, the awesome. sculpture. Yes. Maybe we could yes. create some class yes. in here. Let's do it. That would be fun. Wouldn't that it? would be fun. Yeah. I would like All right. That. Well, we'll talk. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, Monica, I, I know that you've been felting or you're connected to fiber from when you were very young. But what inspired you to continue with this uh, venture, this art venture of yours? And uh, was there something in particular, somebody? Or, or how do you how do you think of it? Uh, fiber. I find fiber is just so very inspiring. It's very thought versatile. You can do so much with it. It can be. It can have so many faces. It can be soft. It can be harsh. And it can be brittle. It can be shiny or dull. It can be heavy and it can be transparent. It's just magical and it's so recyclable and renewable and that's really close to my heart that every little scrap of, of fiber, every little bit of thread or wool can be incorporated into something totally, totally new and, and that's very expiring. And felting, oh my God, felting is just pure magic and mystery. Um, to take this this limp wool and, and to watch it with hot water and soap open up and swell and then the, the hairs interlock and they bond together to form something, something very different, very unique, very tight and very, very dense. It's just very exciting. And the mystery, well the mystery is when, because you, you never quite know how it turns out. Sometimes these pieces have a will of their own and they shrink away you don't want them to or and that's that's the mystery and it's just it's wonderful I just I love working with the old sweaters they have a history they have a story to tell and it's my challenge and my gift to to take them um, and to give them new life and new purpose so I'm very thrilled to be able to do that I think it's wonderful I, I, I took a felting class so I know a little bit about it, and I know what goes into it, and boy, I'll tell you, it takes a lot. It takes and work, but it's magic. Yeah. It's, such a, it's such a rewarding endeavor. Well, you make me want to take another class. Okay, yes. good. Yeah. Maybe you'll teach. I'll teach it. Yes, I will. I will. I will. I will. Thank you. No. That would be fun. Yeah. I would like All right, that. well, we'll talk. Okay. <laughs> okay. And um, let's say in five years down the road, where do you see yourself? I mean, do you have um, dreams? And oh, I do. Oh, yes. This is my dream come true from five years ago when I was sitting in my little sacred space and dreaming up Monica Quiet, the fiber artist. So, but five years from now, um, I would like to be. I would like to be a part of this thriving art community here at the Word Is Art. I would like to be an integral part of it, and I would like to share. Art. Thank you, sweetie. I would like to share the things I've learned over a lifetime working with fiber. Um, I would also like to continue learning and exploring and experimenting. Um, right now I'm working on a, a, a yarn that I'm spinning that incorporates little bits of peacock feathers that I found on my nature walks. So I want to pursue that. Um, and um, most of all, I would like uh, a big museum to commission me for a huge art piece that would use up most of the about 300 plus sweaters I have stored in my house oh, right now. My so that would be how exciting to think yes. about that. Do you have an idea of what that piece? Would I have no like? idea. I have I no idea. I, it hasn't come to that mm -hmm. point yet. But yeah, that's very exciting. Thank you, Renee. Well, I want to thank you for this interview and for sharing yourself with the your friends that are connected to the gallery. And uh, I just love it. I love you. I love you and too, Renee. I'm very pleased for you. And okay. so am I. Thank you so much. Okay. It's my honor. Thank See you. ya. Okay, we're here looking at some of Monica's work and uh, there's going to be more to come but here's some items uh, maybe Monica you could describe some yes. of these pieces for yes. us. Yes, hi I will. This is a little cat purse that I've crocheted with an old sweater and then felted it in the washing machine to get really firm and sturdy and then I, with the felting needle I've em uh, embellished it to put a little cat face on there. So this was a sweater that was totally unraveled um, here, right here, this was the yoke of a sweater. Here's the neck part. And so I just needed to knit a bottom for it to make this purse here. And of course the straps. Um, here is 
a sleeve from a sweater. You can see the cuff here that became a wine bottle cozy. Again, embellished with needle felting with little um, grapes. So that's, that's one technique I use. Um, I also, I love to dye. Sometimes a piece doesn't have the, the proper colors, or I love these fish, I love these colors. So this was a white sweater that has been dyed with Kool-Aid. Um, in a special technique that I've developed and, and then knitted and then it's been felted. So those are kind of like my signature pieces, the, the Kool-Aid dyeing, because I just love the bright, vibrant colors.